All right, this should be a relatively short recording because I'm actually not going to have you guys do a lot of the problems in 7-9. And they're asking you to use models to subtract mixed numbers. And the models, you know, we've done some misslish, mispowers, and they can be pretty cumbersome. Ms. Powers, you might want to face forward so you can see what I'm talking about. Thank you. So um, I do want to just do, I'll do one problem here and I'm on page 303 and I'm looking at number two and it says use fraction strips to find the difference. So if we're talking about difference, we're talking about, you know, subtracting. And so the first one is four and five, six. So I think most of you um, can draw a model using strips that would represent 4 and 5 6 and so I'm gonna go ahead and do that there's 4 and then I'm gonna do one more that will be the the fraction the 5 6 so each one of those Here's one, here's two, here's three, and here's four. Now the last one would be the fraction. And I need to represent five, six. So I need to divide this up into six. So I'm not gonna start at a half, I need to start at a third. So I'm gonna go, I don't know, right about there, and right about there. And so if you look at that now, you can see that, well, let's divide it up into thirds. That's fairly accurate. So, um, but it's not thirds, as you can see. It's five-sixths. So half of a third is a sixth. So I need to divide those in half. Okay? So now each one of these... Each one of those little boxes represents one sixth. Okay? So, what's the fraction? It's five sixths. So, I need to color in five of the six boxes one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to do that. Okay? So, here we have a model of four and five sixths. Now, what are we subtracting? We're subtracting two one and one third. So if I have a, a bar down here, and I divided that up into thirds, it would look like this, which is what this one first looked like before I colored it in and divided it up into sixth. So I need to take away um, two and one third. So subtract two and one third. So if I was to subtract two, that's pretty easy. One, two, and then one third. So I'm going to work with this one right here. What would subtracting one third from five sixths look like? Okay, I see one person that wants to miss McAnulty. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to just take two of these away, which I don't know if I can erase them. I could try it, I guess. Um, yeah, look at that. That worked out really well. So that's, that's one third. You can see that that's the same as this right here. So I took away one third. Now look and see what we're left with. What are we left with? We're left with three shaded boxes, three one-sixths, okay? So I'm going to put 3 over 6. What's another way, way of saying 3 over 6? One half. Yeah, Miss Gleaton. One half. one half. So there's one half left. And what? Two. So the answer would be 2 and 1 half. And so there it is modeled. It's kind of crazy looking. But um, you can see what it would look like if you were to model a subtraction problem. Okay. Mr. Papke, you good with this? Okay. All right. Ms. Charlson? Yeah. Okay. All right. 
So I'm not going to have you guys model all these. I mean, look at all these problems they want you to do and model. I mean, it would take you forever. Okay, you'd be in seventh grade by the time you got done with all these models. Okay, that's kind of silly. So here's what I want you guys to do. Um, I just want you to go ahead and do these like you normally would. And so I'll do a couple of them here. Um, let's see here. How about number 14? I'll do number 14. And let me walk you guys, for those of you that are still kind of struggling with this, it's 6 and 1 half. And we're subtracting 3 and 7 tenths. Okay? So the first thing we need to do is find the common denominator. Okay? So a common denominator would be 10. And so 10 goes into 10 once. 1 times 7 is 7. Okay? 2 goes into 10 five times. 5 times 1 is 5. We're subtracting, remember? We're not adding. All right? Now, this is something you guys haven't done before. I haven't showed you yet, but I'm going to right now. This one little concept is new. So, can we subtract 7 from 5? No. That's not going to work. So, you're going to have to borrow. And so, we're going to make this 6 a 5. And we're going to borrow um, what would be equivalent to the denominator. What's the denominator? It's 10, right? So, let me ask you, what is... 10 over 10 equal? One. one. What did we borrow? We borrowed one. So I'm going to add 10 to the numerator. So now it's 15 over 10 subtracting 7 over 10. Since we borrowed one, now we can do the subtraction. So 7 from 15 is 8, right? So it's 8 over 10, and then 3 from 5 is 2. And we're still not done, because we can reduce it. Some of you might see that. So um, 2 goes into 8 four times, and 2 goes into 10 five times. So your final answer for what number was that I was doing? 14. Yeah, 14 is 2 and 4 fifths. So there's going to be times that you might have to borrow whenever the numerator at the, the one that you're subtracting from the other numerator is larger then you're going to borrow and the amount that you borrow is going to match the denominator which in this case it was 10 so you can see I just added 10. This 5 became a 15 because I just added 10 to it. All right? That's number 14. Um, <clears throat> let's do one more. Let's look at number, um, number 11. And I don't know if that one's going to end up, if that's going to be the same kind of problem or not. I actually haven't done any of these yet. So that's 3 and 1 12th, and we're subtracting 2 and 3 quarters. <clears throat> 2 and 3 quarters. Okay? So, let me pull a stick here. Uh, Miss Gleaton, what's the common denominator? 12. Yeah, she recognizes that um, 12 is a number, obviously 12 will go into it, and 4 goes into 12. So 12 goes into 12 once, 1 times 1 is 1. That stays the same, okay? 4 goes into 12 3 times, and 3 times 3 is 9. Now we, we're subtracting the numerator, so we do have the same problem, just like this last one. Can we subtract 9 from 1? No. No, we have to borrow. So the 3 becomes a 2. Now what's, what's the denominator, Miss Slish? What's the denominator? It's right there. I just circled it. 12. 12. So um, 
12 over 12, that equals 1, right? That's what we're borrowing, 1. So what do we do? We're just going to add 12 to the top. That's what we borrowed from. We borrowed from this 3 right here. So this becomes 13, because 1 plus 12 is 13. 13 over 12, and we're subtracting 9 over 12. Miss Powers, what's 13 subtracting 9? Uh, 4. 4 twelfths. Okay. Now, look at this for a second here. What's 2 from 2? Zero. 0. So, I mean, they cancel out. There's, there's not a whole number involved. The answer is just going to be a fraction. So, uh, Miss Powers, let me ask you, are we done? Can we reduce 4 over 12? Yes. yes, we can. 4 goes into 4 how many times, Ms. Powers? Once. And uh, 4 goes into 12 how many times? Three. 3. So for that one, there's your final answer. It's 1 third. Okay. So these can be kind of tricky. What number was that? 11. 11. Okay. So, um, how long is the video here? We're at 11 minutes, 11 and a half minutes. All right, um, so I did those two for you. So I want you guys to do um, eight through 15, okay? Yeah, I'm not worried about the top of the page, just those, those bottom, uh, bottom eight problems. And um, I want you to do Oh, you could do 16 and it says write an equation to model your work well just write the equation when they're using the word model in here I'm not asking you to do strips or model it in any other way just write the equation in fact I'll just say we could scratch that out to model your work just write the equation okay and then it says, how much longer is the red oak leaf than the paper birch leaf? Again, write the equation. Just scratch out to model your work. Just write the equation. Write the equation. All right. And um, 18, let's see, Lemmy, he walked that much, and then that much, and then Ronnie walked that much. Who walked further? How much further? It looks like you're going to be adding these. Number 19, Jamal's buying lunch for his family. He buys four drinks that cost that much, four sandwiches that cost that much each, if the price included tax. He also leaves a $7 tip. How much? Okay, so you're adding. First, you're going to multiply four by 175, and then four by 750, and then you're going to add that. Write equations to show your work. You know what? I'm going to do this one for you guys. Oh, it looks kind of blurry. So um, let me do the. Let me do this. He buys four drinks that cost um, one seventy-five. So I'm going to put in parentheses this four part. The first part here: four times one point seven five, and then we're going to add to that four times what? What are we going to add to that? Four times what? 750. Then we're going to add to that what? Seven. Seven. Equals. There's the equation. It's going to be four times $1.75, four times $7.50, adding seven to whatever those are, and you will have your answer. And it says write equations to show your work. So the question is, how much does he spend in all? So you're going to have to do this. But at least I did the equation and set it up for you. Miss Gleaton, question? Um, what about the tax? Uh, well, it says here, where was it? Um, that the, if the price includes tax. So what they're implying here, or they're saying, is that this includes tax. Um, it's roughly, I think, 0.08% um, on whatever we purchase. Okay, eight, eight, 
eight percent on what we purchase. So, how do you, how so that's nothing you have to worry about right now. Okay, so you're, it's included. You don't have to worry about tax, is what they're saying. Okay. All right, um, and I'm not worried about uh, 20 and, and 21. So do 19 also, and um, and do 18, and do 17 and 16, and we'll skip 20 and 21. Okay. All right, let me end this video. How long is it? 15 minutes.